so next up we have um, Chad Wagner with the USGS. He also has a recorded presentation. Um, so Chad is the portfolio coordinator of the USGS Water Observing Systems Portfolio, which encompasses programs that aim to carry out the water missions area's objectives to collect, manage, and disseminate consistently high quality and reliable water information in real time and over the long term. He's been with the USGS since 2000 as a, a project chief and in various leadership positions, all of which have allowed him to gain a strong understanding of the way of the, US, the, way the USGS collects data, processes, and delivers our water information, and an appreciation for the ways those data are used. So let me want to pull up his presentation. Good morning, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Chad Wagner, and I lead the Water Observing Systems portfolio for the USGS Water Mission Area. Now I'm going to provide a brief overview of the USGS Water Observing Systems portfolio mission and our priorities. And then I'll focus on a summary of the priority areas of research, curriculum development needs that are associated with the potential new call for proposals through Cairo. The mission statement of the Water Observing Systems portfolio which encompasses programs that aim to carry out the water mission area's objective to collect, manage, and disseminate consistently high quality and reliable water information in real time and over the long term, which are critical for managing the nation's water resources and anticipating and responding to water hazards that can result in a loss of life and property. Now I'd like to highlight the high level priorities of the portfolio. It's on a host of internal and external guidance and strategy documents and surveys of federal, state, and local partners and cooperators. We developed a set of prior, primary and secondary priorities for the water observing system portfolio of, over the next few years. And the first of these is to strategically enhance and expand our temporal and spatial collection of water quantity, quality, and use data using robust, innovative technologies to deliver readily accessible, fit-for-purpose information with various levels of quantified uncertainty. And the second is to modernize the way in which we transmit, process, store, quality assure, and deliver that hydrologic data, with the specific goals of reducing our monitoring costs and developing innovative, intuitive web-based um, data analysis and visualization tools to better understand the status and trends of the nation's water resources. In order to achieve those primary priorities, we've established a set of secondary priorities and activities that we need to conduct. We're looking at developing automated record processing tools utilizing artificial intelligence and machine learning and smart gauging techniques that are utilizing edge computing and also AI ML, where monitoring stations can actually communicate with each other and potentially modify their data collection schedules accordingly. We were also challenged to deliver fit for purpose data by the National Academy of Sciences in their 2018 report uh, that was intended to guide USGS on how we can best address the nation's water challenges over the next 25 years. This concept will require a shift from how USGS has delivered data historically, but we acknowledge that not everyone needs the same level of accuracy to achieve their goals. However, to deliver fit for purpose data, we need to develop clear meta metadata standards for USGS and non-USGS data that are discoverable by users and also develop automated methods to calculate and display observational data uncertainty. You here, we want to also mention some additional secondary priorities. Uh, one of the primary ones, though, is remote sensing advancements in the field of water quantity, hazards, and water quality. We're also looking at exploring and testing new telemetry options to get our data from the field to our databases and ultimately out to the public through our website. Also developing new rapid deployment gauge technologies and configurations to augment our long-term monitoring station networks. And just like we are here today um, presenting to you all, but we're initiating broad agency announcements, co-op agreements, uh, innovation challenges uh, to partner with the private sector and universities on the development of new instrumentation. 
And then finally, with all of this, we want to continue this research to operations pipeline um, in next generation methods and technologies such that we can transition them into our uh, national monitoring networks to ultimately increase the spatial and temporal resolution of our data collection. Biggest initiative currently is what we're calling the Next Generation Water Observing System, or NGWAS. The goals of this program are threefold. Uh, the first one is to provide high-resolution, real-time data on water quantity, quality, and use in integrated water science basins uh, to support assessments, management, and ultimately improve water prediction. The integrated water science basins are targeted watersheds that are representative of larger hydrologic landscape regions, as shown in the figure on the right there. The white colored basins are those that we have selected so far. The second uh, goal is to provide an innovation incubator of sorts for water observing methods and instrumentation development that can be transitioned to our national network operations for the purpose of increasing spatial and temporal density of our water observations, as we stated in our uh, primary priorities before. And the third goal is the modernization of our national water information system, the data telemetry, storage, and delivery of our data to improve um, the integrated delivery of our information to resource managers and the public. The modernization of our national water information system is critical because if we invest in modernized observation uh, networks, and we collect new types of data that don't have anywhere to store, process, QA, and then deliver those data, then why do we even start in the first place? Here's a summary of the general approach to and the characteristics of the next generation water observing system. So we're looking to fill monitoring gaps in both space and time to reduce measurement bias. Um, also, enhance measurement of primary water budget components, um, those that have traditionally not been monitored um, by the USGS, such as soil moisture, um, you know, snow pack monitoring, snow water equivalent, and things like that. Uh, State-of-the-art hydrologic system measurements enabled through need-driven research and development and technology test beds within the next generation water observing system basins. Also development of nimble and flexible rapid deployment technologies, uh, improved integration of multi-platform remote sensing and in situ data, and then modernized and timely data delivery. Um, that includes non-standard or fit for purpose data like I talked about before. A majority of our research and development for the portfolio is conducted within the NGWAS program, and therefore that's why it is so relevant to our relationship with Cairo. I want to briefly discuss the primary areas of NGWAS monitoring research and development that are we are looking to partner with Cairo on in this next phase of proposals. The first being non-contact stream gauging, where things like satellite-derived stage and discharge, surface velocity radars, uh, imagery-based applications for surface velocity and stage are being explored and have applications in challenging sites to measure and providing context and situ situational awareness at our monitoring stations. There are hurdles to overcome with non-contact methods, but we are making progress in some of those implementation hurdles, especially uh, with the enterprise infrastructure that USGS has recently developed that is called the National Image Management System, which I will touch on next. The Hydrologic Imagery Visualization and Information System, or HIVIS, is a new monitoring station imagery delivery system developed by the USGS. And there are several great features as listed on this slide, and there's more coming uh, that include user-defined time frame batch image uploading and downloading and reliable alerting features to notify um, the camera op uh, operators of outages or other station issues. The final area of focus for monitoring research and development I want to touch on is related to remote sensing as we really are striving to accelerate technology development so that more of the products can be incorporated into operational use for the purposes of increasing spatial coverage of our hydrologic monitoring data at lower costs, which would also improve field safety and possibly deliver new types of water data than has been available in the past. 
And we have four focus areas within the remote sensing research and development that we're fo that um, just want to mention to you. We've got the first one is high resolution flood mapping in urban areas um, and aerial river velocity mapping, remote sensing of water quality, and then remote sensing of uh, water levels across the U.S. Then those remote sensing research and development focus areas. These are some of the priorities and areas of interest. Look at sensors mounted on planes, helicopters, balloons, uncrewed aircraft system and satellites to detect and monitor physical and hydrologic characteristics. We're interested in applications for discharge, water level, water quality, soil moisture, as well as snowpack. And expanding and integrating our ground-based observations with satellites over areas ranging from around 100 square meters to 100 square kilometers and then expanding the spatial density and coverage of our observations. I also want to plug the USGS National Innovation Center and NGWAS collaboration through an ongoing seminar series that we aim to share new internal and external monitoring research and development activities. And we figured this might be of interest to you. We have a website for recordings of previous seminars and announcements for future seminars. And this probably could be a nice venue to share the results of existing research collaborations between USGS and Cairo uh, moving forward. Mm. Fiscal years 2022 and 2023, Congress began appropriating $2 million in my portfolio through an initiative called the Hydrologic Science Talent Pipeline which is intended to focus on collaboration with uh, universities to improve one curriculum development training for the next generation of USGS hydrographer, and two, the capacity to uh, support future hydrologic research and operational needs. Uh, within my portfolio, that includes a focus on new and expansion of ongoing USGS research and development of hydrologic instrumentation and, and those accompanying methods. Requests for proposals this past winter uh, to distribute the appropriations we received in FY 22 and 23 led to funding of eight new one to three year projects across uh, over 12 universities that had a focus on the listed types of projects here. Should we receive this hydrologic science ta uh, talent pipeline appropriation in an eventual FY 24 budget, we will issue a new RFP Although we will not be able to fund as many projects uh, this round, since we will still have some projects that will require a third year of funding. Uh, I'll now touch on some topics that we will be focusing on uh, should we submit a, uh, a new RFP. So related to the NGWAS program, our priorities for a new RFP would be conducting uh, observing system simulation experiments or OSSEs using regional or national models to try to help guide where we invest in our new monitoring activities. I'm also developing curriculum around sensor innovation and design, power systems, telemetry, uh, Internet of Things technologies, and autonomous vehicles. Uh, research to improve efficiency and monitoring and data processing, such as scripts for anomaly detection and filtering. Uh, developing smart gauging network approaches. Uh, we've got a lot more details about that um, in the priorities document that we've uh, that we've helped to write up with NOAA, and you all will have access to. And then finally, remote sensing uh, research or associated curriculum, um, including uncrewed aerial systems, image processing, and edge computing for imagery. So, from an instrumentation perspective. Here's a list of the priority areas of research and development uh, within NGWAS. So Internet of Things and telemetry, uh, camera-based monitoring, surface velocity methods, power systems, uh, harmful algal bloom and PFAS sensors, low-cost autonomous underwater vehicles, rapid deployment gauges, water use monitoring sensors or technologies, uh, soil moisture sensors, and applications in urban hydrology. So related to the core National Hydrologic Monitoring Program within my portfolio, our priorities for a new RFP would be focused on research and testing of various observational data uncertainty analyses and methods, 
research and development of the display and delivery of that data uncertainty on our uh, monitoring web pages, and then research around automating uh, records processing algorithms. Thanks for the opportunity to convey these USGS priorities to you today. And if you have any questions about potential collaboration opportunities, you can contact the folks that were listed on the specific focus topic slides, myself, Chad Wagner, or Brian Pellerin, who is the program manager for the NGWAS program. Our contact information is listed here. We appreciate the new collaboration with Cairo, and, and we really look forward to hearing about the progress and also seeing the results of the ongoing research projects that were started this year. Um, I believe we have Chad on the phone. Chad, can you let us know if you can hear us? Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? We can. Thank you for your presentation. Absolutely. Um, we're going to see if there's any questions in the audience. So okay. Question in the back. Oh, is that Jason? <laughs> Thank you. That was a very uh, interesting presentation. I was really happy to see the focus on quantified uncertainty from uh, USGS. There was a study I read, Macmillan et al., that showed that um, for low flows, stream flow errors may be as high as 100%. And for high flows, they may, they're commonly as high as 40%. Um, so I guess with that in mind, what to, to what extent is, are the, are the uh, efforts at quantifying uncertainty going to be applied to kind of data going forward? And what, how will they be, be applied to historical data? And then um, can you comment on perhaps how the USGS will incorporate uncertainty into some of their modeling efforts, the, the longer term modeling efforts. Yeah, um, we're, we're working actually currently on the, the observational uh, uncertainty methods so that we can apply them both to, um, you know, USGS data, but as well as other data that, um, you know, we, we may end up serving. That was one of the challenges that that uh, National Academies of Sciences uh, report. Uh, laid out for us is to, you know, not only serve USGS data, um, but also serve other types of data to make it um, available for the modeling community, particularly. And um, in order to do that, we need to clearly define how the data were collected, whether that be USGS data or other data, but then also, you know, provide these consistent methods to compute um, uh, uncertainty. And um, we really haven't uh, gotten to that point to determine if we're going to go, you know, backward in time um, and, and compute these, um, you know, historically the observational data uncertainty. But uh, but you know, moving forward, the the idea um, would be to kind of put these bounds of uncertainty around our continuous data um, and have those be dynamic, you know, throughout the year. Um, these these change, uh, particularly like when a, a site may go in, you know, under uh, go into ice control. You know, there's going to be higher uncertainties during those periods of time than other times of the year. And uh, based on uh, field visits, when we discover um, when a technician goes out and discovers there is an issue with the site, you know, that that uncertainty bounds for that previous period of time since the last uh, visit. Um, could dynamically grow uh, based on that information. So we're looking to be dynamic. Um, you know, high flow, low flow, um, you know, just, uh, you know, be able to be dynamic with those uh, observational uncertainty calculations. Um, and, you know, the the question about, I think you asked about uncertainty and, and modeling, um, it's a little bit out of, out of my wheelhouse. Um, that's, you know, that's on the other uh, portfolio, but we certainly, as we, as we're able to understand the uncertainty of our data, that's going to influence the uh, the uncertainty calculations of our models, because um, right now when you know we we apply a, a data value um, to a model calibration or validation, we don't really apply any uncertainty to that data point, right? We apply, hey, this is the actual data point, 
and um, we you know quantify that uncertainty of the model around that. So once we start to add you know add in that uncertainty of the uh, actual observational data point, then that obviously will impact how we compute our our model and prediction uncertainties. But um, can't speak to to too much more than than that from from uh, from the modeling perspective. But hopefully that uh, addresses most of your uh, most of your points there. Thank you, Chad. All right, we have time for just one quick question before we go to break. Any other questions? Hi, Ann Jefferson, University of Vermont. Chad, thanks for your presentation. A couple times I saw the words urban hydrology on there, and I was wondering if you could give us any more specifics about particular interests in that realm. Yeah, I think from an urban hydrology perspective, we, we've we been testing some, some things out in the Chicago metropolitan area, one of our integrated water science basins where we're um, one of those in innovation incubators is in the Illinois uh, River Basin. And, and those are, um, you know, sensors that are non-contact or are able to sense, you know, inundation, not necessarily raw. Uh, they don't need, necessarily need to be raw accurate from a, a water level perspective, but being able to sense when an area is becoming inundated and being able to alert um, like line of sight radios to alert um, emergency management uh, officials that, hey, this area, maybe because of some uh, catch basin that's backing up or, uh, you know, other reasons, you know, other urban urbanized area reasons um, where water is is um, is backing up and be able to transmit that information, uh, you know, very quickly. Also, non-contact velocity and imagery um, uh, sensors with imagery that we can actually um, you know, we can't because these urban areas are so flashy that sometimes we just can't get people out um, to those sites to measure them quickly enough um, to be able to um, get velocity information that we can we can get discharge and um, information without having someone actually be on site. Um, an additional, um, you know, being able to put out sensors to get certain water quality uh, like bacteria. Uh, fecal ind indicator bacteria in a um, continuous sensor. Um, we're also experimenting with some technologies in that regard too. That has um, that has definite urban ties to it. So those are just some examples. All right. Thank you, Chad.